Oh, hello! My name is Mara, and welcome to Books Like Whoa. Okay, so you are getting a bonus video today uh, because I have unearthed from the depths of my phone some footage that was corrupted but somehow now was recoverable. I don't know. Sometimes my phone, I think, is trolling me. But anyway, I filmed the uh, Bougie Booktuber tag while I was at Booknet Fest last month. Um, and it was going to be a part of that vlog, but for some reason, I just like it kept being corrupted and I wanted to get the vlog up, so I gave up. I was able to save the footage, so this is my sort of like unet like this is gonna be a very low editing video uh my sort of takes on the bougie booktuber book tag uh which was created by the fabulous olive at a book olive she tagged me in it so thank you very much olive and it was a really interesting tag uh it was taking an idea from beauty youtube which i love seeing translated into booktube and uh yeah i don't know this this is a tag i use to help prepare myself for one of the panels that i was on um, about consumerism. So anyway, here is the footage from past me uh, filming this in my hotel room. Hey guys, so back in my room. I thought I would pause here and actually do a little tag that a book Olive, aka Olive, tagged me in I think yesterday, uh, which was the bougie booktuber tag. And the reason I thought that I would go ahead and do this is that I was I, I need to do a little prep because I have three panels I'm on tomorrow. And one of them is about consumerism in booktube and I actually thought this would be a good way for me to kind of start processing some of my thoughts um, about materialism and booktube and all that stuff. So this is the bougie booktuber tag created by Olive. Thank you for tagging me, Olive. So first question is, what is your average monthly budget for books? And I feel like I'm gonna get a lot of shit for this, but at this point I would say I aim to spend roughly $200 a month on books which is a lot, I know. Keep in mind that part of how that has sort of evolved is one, um, when I went keto, I reallocated nearly all of my monthly budget from eating out to my book budget because basically as a way to like incentivize myself to be good about making my food at home and like that's just become habit now. So like that, a lot of that came out of what originally was in my eating out budget. I eat out maybe like once or twice a month at this point. So there's that. And then I do use some money that I make from, from booktube. I try to put back in my channel in some way or other. And part of that is putting it back into books that I'm reading for you guys, things that I may not have taken a chance on or not sought out a specific copy of um, if, I, if I didn't have a little extra there. So I know that's a lot of money. Granted, I like spending money on books, which is, if the, if the question here is, am I a bougie booktuber? The answer is yes, like I, I'm aware of that. So, um, so there's that. Number two is what's the most you've ever spent in a bookstore at one time? I would guess somewhere between 100 and 150 bucks. I've never gone to a bookstore and just been like, like all at once, <laughs> all at once. Well, I mean, does it count when you're like in college or grad school? I'm sure I probably spent more just because textbooks are so expensive, but like pers just like for fun, probably I'm going to say no more than 150 in one go. Number three is, are you willing to pay full price for a brand new release or will you wait until you have a coupon or there's a sale? I am willing to pay full price for a brand new release. I mean, I do it all the time. Um, I say that the way that I do most of my pre-orders is through Amazon. That is mostly a function of convenience of not having to remember to like go pick it up or whatever. Um, so by virtue of that, I am not actually paying full retail price because Amazon. Um, but in principle, like, am I in principle willing to do that for books that I love? Like, yes, of course. It, I mostly don't end up doing that. Again, kind of a function of convenience. I know that I am a cog in the machine of why things are not great sometimes <laughs> in the book, sell book selling industry. And I apologize for that, but that's just the truth of the matter. Uh, would you rather buy one new book or several less expensive used copies? It depends. Again, um, if it's for collection purposes, then I would prefer to buy one nice new copy. If it's like just for general reading purposes, I'm I'm totally happy when I happen upon uh, a book that I'm excited about at a used bookstore. Like, I love that. I have a great used bookstore um, both where I live and in my hometown. So I have been a lifelong user of the used bookstore. It's actually really only in the last few years that I've become 
more of a new book buyer than a used book buyer. So number five is what do you think a reasonable price is for a new hardback, a paperback, an ebook? So here's where I'm gonna disagree with Olive a little bit because she she understandably, I see where she's coming from, uh, was very anti the price, the high pricing of ebooks. Here's the deal. When a book is first released, that is when the publisher is trying to make sure that they are going to recoup all of their overhead costs and like make sure they're, they're doing their best to make sure they at least break even on this book. That is why hardbacks are so expensive. And that is why if a ebook is a brand new release, it is very expensive. Now I agree with all of that. I am personally not willing to pay $15.99 for an ebook that is a new release. In that situation, I would wait it out. But I do, you know, I hear why people are frustrated at ebook prices. And again, I agree because actually when you buy an ebook, you don't even technically own it. You're technically leasing it. In terms of just like paradigmatically, uh, I agree that I don't wanna pay a premium price at that level to not even own the book technically. But I also, you know, like this gets into the whole like supporting you like independent bookstores and paying full price for books. A part of supporting this industry, which margins in this industry are not great. Like if you really look at the economics of how publishers stay alive, it is on the basis of having a couple of breakout best-selling titles every year. And that honestly subsidizes a lot of the rest of their front list. Um, so, you know, I, I think you gotta find the balance between something that is accessible to people and makes them able to support releases by buying them versus so low that you're not enabling the future of these of these you know large scale publishers to continue. So with that being said, to me kind of how I think ideally the pricing should work, I think ideally a hardback should be around 18 bucks. I think ideally a trade paperback should be around 12 bucks. And ideally I think a new ebook should be around seven or eight bucks, which was the price of a mass market in the past. And to me, that's, that's where an ebook's price belongs is at the same level as a mass market paperback. So that's my feelings about that. Number six is, is a signed book worth more to you? How about a first edition? Uh, I'm gonna say no. <laughs> so signed books mean almost nothing to me. I guess they would mean something if I was the one who was there and had it signed personal to me. And if the book was something that I was going to keep and I had some connection to the author that would make that signature more meaningful. In general, it just doesn't really mean a lot for me. And there are some signatures that enhance resale value of used books or secondhand books, but there's actually not that many that truly make a difference in terms of the resale. I think if you go to a used bookstore, you will find plenty of signed copies that are priced the exact same as a copy next to them that was not signed. So signatures, not so much. First editions is not something that I am particularly fussed about. Um, I have received as gifts first editions of some C.S. Lewis books. Um, which was a lovely gift and I appreciate and treasure those. But again, it's not something I would necessarily seek out and I'd only really care about it for books that I like truly love. Number seven, what is your most valuable book, sentimental or actual value? Actual value, I would get, again, I would guess it would be one of those C.S. Lewis first editions. I have a first edition of um, The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe. So I'm gonna guess that's probably the most valuable book I have. It was a gift, I'm not sure what it actually cost. Um, in terms of sentimentally, um, I would say three books. I have a collection of poetry for children that my grandmother gave me. Um, and I also have a hardback co little copy of Little Women that my grandmother gave me. And those two are very sentimentally precious to me. And then the last book that I gave my father before he died was The Color of Law. And that was the last book he read right before he passed. He was really enjoying it. We were gonna like talk about it. So um, after he passed, I, I took that copy back um, and I keep it prominently displayed on my shelves. So I would say those three are probably the most sentimental ones I have. Number eight is will you pay more for a cover or edition you like better? Yes, I will. You guys have seen that in my uh, videos with frequency. I definitely am always willing to pay a little bit more for that. Uh, number nine is what physical characteristics does a good quality book have? So in terms of a book that will like stand the test of time, like the number one thing you need to worry about is pay, like paper quality, um, what kind of ink is being used? Like, is it essentially like an archival ink that will stand up well and not fade over time? And then ideally you would have um, stitched in pages and not glued in. So 
in theory, if you're wanting a book that's going to hold up for a long time, those are kind of the three big things you got to look for. Number 10 is if you won the lottery, what bookish things would you do with the money? Um, I definitely would like travel bookishly. So I would think I would like go on some tours of various places I've either wanted to visit because of a book or like fam famous authors' houses, things like that. Um, I mean, I... So in the book, this gets into the bonus, give us an image, actual or mental of your dream home library. So like, ideally, if I won the lottery, I would probably move into a house that had a room that was well situated to be outfitted with a bunch of built in bookcases, some like comfy wing back padded chairs with footstools, uh, a nice big window for light, maybe like a fireplace something like that. So uh, I probably would spend that money on that. But I mean, honestly, the closest, like my ideal dream library is probably the one in Beauty and the Beast. I'm a simple girl. It doesn't take much to please me. So yeah, that was my bougie booktuber tag. And thank you to all for tagging me and for helping me sort of like get my mind together as I start preparing some notes for the panel that I'm going to be on tomorrow. So I'm going to be on three tomorrow. I'm going to be on um, the first one's about spoilers, the second one is about consumers in booktube, which we were just talking about, and then the third one is about classics in booktube and how to get modern readers into classics. And back to the present! So, I hope you guys enjoyed that book tag, and uh, yeah, a little bonus video for you guys, since I was able to save the footage. Uh, so definitely let me know how you feel. If you have any answers to the questions uh, in the comments below, thank you again so much to Olive for tagging me. I absolutely love Olive and her channel. I will have her linked below. And yeah, I think that that will do it. So uh, if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, follow me on the social meds. If you are so inclined, I have all of that information listed in the description box below. And I think that that will do it. Hope you are having an absolutely lovely day, and I will just talk to you soon. Bye!